Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to the second part of our two-part series covering missing persons cases with strange endings. If you haven't seen part one, be sure to check that out first. We'll leave a link in the description below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this. It really helps us to continue building the channel. With that out of the way, here is part two of two missing persons cases with incredibly bizarre endings. For citizens and tourists alike, the allure of Australia's far north Queensland region is easy to understand. The area is home to three World Heritage Sites, including the Great Barrier Reef and the wet tropics of Queensland, each of which draws thousands of yearly visitors eager to witness the one-of-a-kind breathtaking views. Further north are a chain of over 200 tropical islands scattered throughout the Torres Strait, leading all the way up to Papua New Guinea. Though the region does see large population fluctuations during tourist season, especially in coastal towns like Port Douglas, outside the main hub city of Cairns, many places in the far north are renowned for their remoteness and isolation. Like any region known for its relative seclusion, it can be easy to get lost if you're not careful, and people do go missing. In December of 2010, one such incident took place that would simultaneously confuse and intrigue investigators when a 55-year-old American tourist disappeared while on a kayaking trip. The man's name was Kenneth Rodman, and it would take nearly five years to learn the truth about what had happened to him. Months before Kenneth would ever make headlines in Australia, he was living what by all accounts was a completely normal life in California. While there wasn't a ton of information we could find about his personal life, what we do know is that he held jobs as a construction worker and special effects designer, and that he was divorced from his former wife, Corey Hallmark. The two had a nine-year-old daughter together. Though we don't know much about the dynamic of the family's relationship, it appears that Kenneth was still in his daughter and ex-wife's lives, as his wife would later tell police that she had been to his house several times in the months leading up to his disappearance. Reports give different accounts about why Kenneth decided to take his trip to Australia in the fall of 2010. Many sources say that he was simply on vacation, while his ex-wife Corey alleged that he told her that he was seeking help with some kind of illness. Based on statements that Corey gave to the media, it appears that Kenneth never shared the full details of his mysterious condition, but nonetheless claimed that it was serious and that Australia was where he would be able to receive an alternative treatment. When Kenneth arrived in the country, he stayed with friends in Mowbray, just south of Port Douglas. For most of the trip, everything appeared to be fine. That was until he decided to set out for an extended kayaking trip on December 21st. On that day, Kenneth was seen heading towards a local beach with his green kayak. He told his friends that he planned to travel approximately 200 kilometers south, ultimately ending up in the sleepy seaside village of Cardwell. After that, he disappeared. When Kenneth failed to report back to both his friends in Australia and his family in the US, many people started to worry. The friends whose house he had been staying at decided to alert the police, and an investigation into the 55-year-old's disappearance soon began. Authorities learned that Kenneth had last been seen in his kayak on Christmas Day, four days after he left his friend's place in Mowbray. However, witnesses hadn't been sure which direction he had been traveling in. Pleas were made to the public for information regarding Kenneth's disappearance, and his name and photo began appearing in various newspapers and media reports. Of particular concern was the fact that the area where Kenneth was kayaking was known for its crocodile-infested estuaries. In the height of Australia's summer when he went missing, the ocean waters were also filled with deadly box jellyfish. Though friends and family tried not to fear the worst, this proved extremely difficult when only a month later, Kenneth's green kayak was found capsized off the coast of Wangeti Beach, just 17 kilometers from where he had first departed for his trip. Though no trace of Kenneth's body was found, the recovery of his kayak was seen as a grim omen. 
The idea that he had succumbed to either the wildlife or the elements seemed to track with the fact that few additional details could be uncovered about his disappearance. Kenneth's ex-wife, Corey, would later describe the distressing period immediately following the disappearance, as she and her bereaved family and friends tried to stay on top of any new information in the case. She said that for months, she spoke almost daily with her ex-husband's friends in Australia and the U.S., as well as with authorities in both countries. But eventually, those calls became less and less frequent. One of the people who similarly found themselves unable to put the case out of their thoughts was Senior Sergeant Ed Lucan. He was the officer in charge at the Mossman Police Station, where the initial report of Kenneth's disappearance was made, and was involved in the search and investigation. Like many, Lucan had no idea what to make of the case, but hoped that despite the unsettling circumstances concerning the recovery of Kenneth's kayak, that authorities might still be able to find him alive. There were a couple of reasons to think that this might be the case. First of all, there were several reported sightings of Kenneth after police released appeals to the public. These sightings were from all over, and included places further south in Queensland like Ingham, Airlie Beach, and Sydney, but also included sightings as far away as the Northern Territory, and even Western Australia. Though none of the sightings could be confirmed, and false hits are common in missing persons investigations, as long as tips continue to come in, it seemed that there was reason to hold out hope. The second major reason that Lucan thought Kenneth could be alive had to do with his kayak. When it was recovered in January of 2011, investigators noticed that the plugs on it had been removed, suggesting that it might have been intentionally capsized. However, despite any suspicions Lucan might have had, no concrete evidence concerning Kenneth's whereabouts emerged. Months passed, and then years, until Lucan was eventually transferred to a different police station outside of Cairns, left only to wonder what might have happened to Kenneth Rodman. While it wouldn't be revealed until much later, Corey Hallmark began to have suspicions of her own about her ex's disappearance. Though in the immediate aftermath, she had been understandably overwhelmed by the situation, as more time passed, certain pieces started to click into place. She remembered that in the months before Kenneth went on his trip, she had noticed strange searches on his home computer, on topics such as how to hide money offshore. She also recalled strange comments that Kenneth had made to her that reportedly took on new significance in the aftermath of his sudden disappearance. Again, though, these were merely suspicions. That all changed at the end of June of 2015, when things took an extremely bizarre turn. It began when police in the Cannes suburb of Smithfield got a call about a break and enter late on the night of June 27th. While they were attending to that call, a second call came in about another break in. At approximately 2 a.m., while they were investigating the second report, a suspicious looking man rode past on a bicycle. Believing that this might be the culprit they were looking for, officers yelled for the man to stop so that they could question him. As soon as they called out to him, the man took off. Luckily for Smithfield police, they had called for the assistance of the Cannes police dog squad, who were able to follow the man's scent. They tracked him through James Cook University across to the campus shopping center, where they found the man's discarded backpack and bicycle. Despite his effort to take off on foot, one of the police dogs named Xander was able to pick up on the man's trail again and lead officers into some thick brush where the man was found hiding in a creek bed. He was then taken into custody. When police brought the man back to the station and questioned him, he made a shocking confession. He was Kenneth Rodman, the now 60-year-old missing American tourist who had disappeared nearly five years earlier. Coincidentally, it turned out that he had nothing to do with either of the two break-ins that had been reported the previous night. He just happened to be riding his bike past the area at the unluckiest possible moment. In a further twist almost too ridiculous to believe, it also turned out that Smithfield was where Senior Sergeant Ed Lucan had been transferred to after leaving his previous station. While officers were able to establish that Kenneth was a missing person, it wasn't until Lucan arrived at work that morning that the full scope of the crazy story was uncovered. While Kenneth was apparently never forthcoming with authorities about exactly why he chose to fake his disappearance, 
it's been speculated that he simply wanted to start a new life in Australia. The time that he went missing was close to the expiry of his tourist visa, meaning that he soon would have needed to leave the country. According to his wife, he also owed more than $50,000 in unpaid child support for their daughter, another reason he might have been keen to leave his old life in America behind. While these seem like reasonable conclusions to make, there are some mysteries that still linger in the case, particularly how Kenneth was able to support himself while on the run. Police theorized that he likely had help from friends, though as far as we can tell, this was never actually proven. At the time that Kenneth was arrested, he had well overstayed his visa and was transferred over to the custody of Australia's Department of Immigration and Border Protection before being deported to the United States. Unfortunately, this is the last real information we could find about Kenneth Rodman. In an article around the time of his capture, his ex-wife told Australian media that she worried for her and her daughter's safety because of the money that Kenneth owed them, and hoped that authorities in the U.S. would hold him legally responsible for what he had done. However, it appears that no updates have since been given about the case. Do you know of any other cases like this that you think we should check out? Tell us about them in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.